the power of the human mind. You see, the human mind, I would say, is equivalent. It's not as close. But if we want something to equate the human mind with, then it's going to be a supercomputer that we have. Those of you who are familiar with bandwidth and the speed of the internet and computers, they are CPU and all those things. Last I was talking to somebody and they said Google has gone to Charlotte to map out certain area and they have laid fiber optics. And uh, even to some apartments, some residential areas, and it is providing thousand down, thousand up. Now, if you are into bandwidth, like I said, you know thousand upload and download is not cheap. <laughs> Amen. You need to have a computer that is super fast. To be able to handle that speed. At the click of the mouse, you are everywhere. You download stuff, you don't have to blink. The other time I was downloading, I had a bad mode. My, I, was, I was downloading some um, uh, soft, uh, software and about 17,000 megabytes. And it took me almost two hours. I said, no, there, could, there should be a better way. I was sitting down, I would sleep in and out and get up and that thing was sitting down there. I, in fact, sometimes it goes below 56K. So I went and changed my modem, tested my speed and I was getting 300 by 20. I said, this is what I'm talking about. And when I put it on there, oh, zoom, less than five minutes, everything was up. But what I'm trying to tell you, this is supercomputer. But the mind is more complicated and more faster than the supercomputer and the fiber optic light. You see, the human mind is what drives every agenda. Computers were designed based on human mind. Human beings created computer. And so everything that you look at in the air, airplane, or submarine, or ships, or cars, and you are so fascinated and blown away by them, I want you to take a minute and look at the power of the human mind. Because those things were made by somebody's mind. Hallelujah. And so, harnessing the power or the potential of human mind is essential for you to becoming a successful person. Everything that you need to prosper in life is embedded in the recesses of your mind. Everything your success is not tied into anybody. God, according to scriptures, fearfully and wonderfully designed you to be like him. So everything you need in life to succeed is in you, is in the mind. You just need to seek the right kind of information and tap into the right potential and you will be on top of life. You shall become the breadwinner of your home. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why if your mind falls in the wrong hands, your whole purpose in life is compromised. Be careful. If your mind falls into the wrong hand, you will fail. But if your mind falls into the right kind of mind, you will succeed. To those of you who are not familiar 
As immigrants, we travel and we camp. Most of the time, your success lies with the person that hosts you for the first six months of your entry into the United States. They, will, they can either screw you up or put you on the pathway of success. If the person has no fear of God in his heart or her heart, and he has messed up his life, he will make sure yours is messed up too. Hallelujah. That is why you need to be careful in whose hands your mind falls. It is very, very, very important. On the other hand, when your mind falls in line with God's purpose for you, you cannot fail. That is not possible. You cannot fail if your life is in sync with the plan and the purpose of God for your life. You cannot fail. Challenges will come, yes. Sometimes setbacks, yes. But for you to fail in life is impossible. Because the word of God cannot fail. Are you understanding me? That's why the scripture says that a man is the total sum of his or her thoughts. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. As he thinks so is he. And so wherever you are in life or wherever you have reached in life right now as I'm speaking it is as a result of what your brain is spewing into your body. I did not hear amen to that. You can thank your parents for educating you. You can thank your uncle or relative or friend for helping you along the line. But the ultimate decision was made by you to either follow their counsel or to reject it. And so whoever you are and wherever you are in life is as a result of the states of your mind. Because the way a man thinks that is how or who he is. Your mind cannot be full of life and all you see is death. Your mind cannot be full of praise and all you see is accusation. Your mind cannot be full of great things and all you see is always at the bottom. Whatever your mind is, that is how you're going to be. Some of us work hard and we think that by working hard, we can change our situation. Working hard is good, but if your, your willingness or your, your quest or your desire to change where you are is not in sync with your hard work. All you do is in vain. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So your thoughts must match your actions. It must correlate or flow along with your actions. That is why the other day I was saying that the most dangerous part a Christian, a child of God can choose is to be a Christian and carry another person's head. <laughs> to be a child of God and carry another person's head. When you do that, your eyes are no longer your eyes. Your mouth is no longer your mouth. Your nose is no longer your nose. And your brain is no longer your brain. And God has so wonderfully designed human being, body, soul, and spirit. The soul is the real you. 
and the body stands the other side and the spirit stands on the other side. The soul is in the center. The realm of the soul of man is the mind. The realm of the soul of a man is the mind. That is where mind lives. Uh, the soul lives in your mind. And so, if you yield to the body, flesh turns, that is why what scripture says, things that are born earthly are earthly, or fleshly are fleshly. And whoever is born spiritual is spiritual. So whatever you yield... Whenever you yield to the spirit, the spirit of God influences your soul which lives in the recesses of the mind. So the mind is like a coach or caboose, if you will. And the train head is your whole life. And so whatever gets dumped into your soul, whatever gets dumped into your, uh, your, your, your mind... It's what drives the agenda of your life. Let me tell you, if your mind is not ready, let Bank of America empty their vaults and give you all the money they have. You will still be a failure. Oh, come on, I did not hear amen to that. You see, some people think that success comes and falls on our, on our lives. Success is driven from here. And failure is driven from here. In your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. They all come in your mind. So the object of the individual that has control or access to your mind controls your whole life. And let me tell you, I'll give you an example. Have you seen a mad person who is scared to sleep outside? A mad person, somebody who is insane, will come and shout on the street, I'm scared to sleep under the trees or the parking lot or anywhere. Why? The reason is that the mind is hijacked by something. And that something is in control of his whole life. That is why I'm saying, whoever have access to your mind controls you whether you know it or not. So be careful the person you yield your mind to. Don't blame your mama. Don't blame your papa. Don't blame your friend. Don't blame your anybody, uncle or who. It's you. The key is here. Hallelujah. It's important. We understand. Because you know, I have studied, I have not studied mad people, but as I went through the word of God, especially in the Gospel of Luke and Mark, when Jesus often encountered these mad people, especially the, um, a classic one was the one that lived in tombs in the cemetery. Some of us don't even want to look at cemeteries. In fact, the American cemetery is, is beautiful. Go to Africa and look at a cemetery. I tell you, that night you will have nightmares over nightmares. <laughs> yeah, it is really the ghost town. <laughs> Amen. And yet this man, lunatic, full of demons, was able to live there by himself. At night, he'd be screaming, cutting himself, 
Why is that? The mind has been taken over by a legion of demons. Those demons drove him. So, you need money, you need good health, you need a husband, you need wife, you need a job. It starts from here. It must begin from here. The way a man thinks, so is he. Delays may come, setbacks may come, but that is not the end of your story. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that those who endure unto the end, they shall be rewarded and be saved. I want to give you quickly three keys to unlock the power of your mind. Three keys. And Christians often, you know, you can pray and pray and pray. Prayer is good. You can fast and fast and fast and until your mind is changed. Jesus said, Except a man be born again. Do you know what it means? A 180 degrees overhaul of your mind. Jesus said until you did that, you cannot walk with him. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot enjoy the kingdom privileges until you empty your preconceived agenda and ideologies and all the plans and thoughts that you have. Except a man be born again. You cannot please God. To be born again. Is to remove the old engine. And put a new one in. If your car is causing you problem. And it has to do with the engine. Go to junkyard, get you a used engine, and take the old one out and put that one in. Guess what? Amen. You have a brand new car. Amen. Even though people will see you as the same person, as far as the skin color and the facial look and everything is concerned, but the way you do things are going to change dramatically. Because something that cannot be seen, as Jesus said, he who is born of the spirit is spirit, you cannot see it. Amen. Something has taken root and taken place in you that man cannot see, but all they see is that things are changing and the cloud of darkness around your life is all pattern and going away. A new life and a new beauty and a new glory is all radiating around you because something is taking place. Amen. You are taking the old out Amen. and you are put the new in. Amen. Except a man be born again. He cannot enter into my father's kingdom. Amen. What Jesus was saying is he doesn't say that as a grown up person like Nicodemus was asking. Go in and enter into your mother's womb the second time. But he is telling you something has got to be changed in your life. And that something is something that controls and drives every agenda of your life. Amen. Replace it. Renovate it, and you will be free. Freedom indeed shall be your portion. Hallelujah. Freedom shall be your portion. Number one, change the way you think. Change the way you think. Today we learned so much at Sunday school. It was a wonderful, uh, you know, uh, discussion. Those of you who have not been coming to Sunday school, you are missing a great deal. Sunday school materials are designed by Assemblies of God that within seven years, you would have you know, studied the entire Bible. Some of you have never, you have Bible in your hand, you have never opened the book of Revelation. Never! Because you are scared. You don't understand symbols, elements, and all this. But if you attend Sunday school often, for seven years, you are more than a pastor. You know the word. Hallelujah. Amen. You know the word. And so, the first thing to unlock the power of your mind 
is to change your thinking. Change your thinking. Look into your Bible from verse 3 of our text to 5. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The spirit of God is what is going to help you to change your thinking. You need a word. The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. The word of God has the power to change the way you think. The more you take in the word of God, the more you grow in it. Faith, as we all know, comes only if you have time to study the word of God. Amen. You cannot leave the house of God and go home and put your Bible under a shelf and only to pull it out on a Sunday, Sunday basis and expect to grow and mature in Christ. Your maturity, your growth is not tied into any pastor. It's not tied into any leader. It's not tied into any usher. It's not tied into any deacon. It's not tied into anybody. Your growth and maturity depends on your willingness to study the word of God. I only come here to preach like 35, 40 minutes and I'm gone away. For the rest of the seven days, you are on your own. You must study the word of God to show yourself a proof unto God. Stop complaining and blaming other people and begin to live as a child of God by changing your thinking. Yes. That is the word. Amen. Begin to change that thinking. Amen. That every problem that occurs to you is somebody's fault. Amen. You never blame yourself. <laughs> I'm preaching to somebody here now. Hallelujah. You see, everything that goes wrong is somebody's fault. I never notice you say, it is my fault this time. Well, that makes me think that the mind you are carrying is not yours. If it is yours, at least you will share part of the blame. Because you are doing the thinking. Let us change the way we think. And things will be all right with us. Amen. Then we can please God and enjoy the kingdom privileges. Amen. The Bible says that if a man's ways pleases the Lord, his enemies will even be at peace with him. God will fight for you. God will lead you in the way. He told the Israelites, there are many dangers in the wilderness. I will not let you go alone. I will prepare my angel to go ahead of you. God is taking matters into his own hands. Changing the way we think. And beginning to think like Christians. We should not think like unbelievers. If you change the way you think, then you can walk with the Lord. Yes, amen. That's what he said. He told Peter, Peter launched the net over there. Peter said, Lord, I have told the whole night, but at thy word, I am changing because of you. When you change your thinking, you become a brand new man. Yeah. Spirit of God begins to drive your agendas. And God cannot make a mistake. Hallelujah. Amen. God cannot make a mistake. 
In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says that, Renew your mind with the word of God. The word renew, the original text has to do with to renovate. To renovate. To overhaul. To make it new again. Changing your mind with money will not work. Changing your mind with anything other than the word of God will not work. Don't let friends change your mind. Then don't let your mother change your mind. Then let your father change your mind into doing the right thing. Don't let peer pressure change your mind. Because they do certain things certain ways. You think you will be alone, so you follow along. Because somebody did it this way and attracted the praise of people who are heading into destruction. You also want to follow the same path. Do not let money change your mind. I told you some time ago that a tuba of yam and the head of swordfish, Kobe, has the power to change somebody's mind to lie. Yes, it's unfortunate. But it does happen. When people are pushed and they find themselves in the corner, and instead of them to look up to God and say, Father, thy will be done, they look up to man and to disappoint God. They fail God because they want to save their skin. Change the way you think about God. You see, the way you see God determines how God, to what extent he can go. To help you. Many kids think their fathers are superheroes. So even if they are standing in front of a giant and they don't look, they don't like what is coming, they can say that I will go and tell my daddy, my daddy will beat you up. But the truth of the matter is probably that the, the giant could use just one finger to push him down. Amen. But because the, the, the kid is so, you know, passionate about the father and so, so charged up that his father could do something. When he tells the father or she tells the father, the father, even though the father knows sometimes maybe he will be beaten down, but the father wants to do something. Sometimes you go in to negotiate. I don't want you to beat me up. I just want my, my child to be happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Change the way you think. Don't look at people as good for nothing. Don't look at people as waste pipes because they don't agree with you. Everybody has the potential to do something for God. Everybody has the power, some kind of inbuilt reboot system that God has put in all of us that when things get corrupted, we can reboot ourselves to become what God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Amen. It is time for you to reboot your mind. If your computer has viruses or malware and slows you down and do all things you don't like, reboot it and set it to the factory default. God created you with a lot of resources. The brain 
so powerful. You cannot waste it. But all the cobwebs that are there need to go away in order for you to see the hand of God in your life. And that means you need to replace the old with new. Except a man be born again. That word, we don't often hear it anymore. But it is so powerful. Child of God, you call yourself a Christian. You need to be born again. Trash the childish ideologies, the superstitions, and something you hold on, you don't want to give to God. Let me tell you, if you have ten rooms, and you give nine to God, uh, to, 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 to God and leave one room for yourself, that is enough what the devil wants. You see, all the devil wants you to do is 99.99% right. The point one is what he needs. Change your thinking. Don't think bad about people. If somebody has a past, don't use it against them. Because you too, guess what? You have passed. Respecting one another will not happen until we begin to appreciate one another and value them because God created them. The second thing that will unlock the power of your mind is to get the right kind of information. There are a lot of information out there. A lot of information out there. You see, what keeps some well-meaning people from developing their God-given potential or talent is that they do not have access to the right kind of information to transform their lives. Instead, they hang around the wrong kind of people who are spewing into them the wrong kind of information. Oh, I did not hear amen. amen. If you want to turn things around, you have to be prepared to lose some friends. If you are not willing to part away with the old company, forget it. <laughs> Hallelujah! Forget it! If you want to make headway and leap ahead, you must be prepared to part away with some old folks that are choking your life. Information. Knowledge is power. Amen. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. The Bible says that for lack of knowledge, my people perish. It's not lack of coming to church. It's not lack of praying. Lack of knowledge. What you need is not so much prayer. What you need is the proper kind of information that will put you in your destiny. That is what you need. You can fast all you want. You can pray all you want. And I'm not saying you don't fast and don't pray. What I'm saying is that you must couple or inculcate into your prayer life and your fasting life a sound information that is in line with your calling, not his calling and not her calling, your calling. That is the information you need. Information is power. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Get wisdom. For wisdom is the principal thing. And in all you're getting, get understanding. You need information. That is why... Studying your word, the word of God, and the people you surround yourself with. I don't know how many times this is so important. There are people who are going to nowhere. And you have allowed them into your life. And they are leading you into nowhere. Amen. Amen. And by the time you realize, you are not going nowhere. 
It's probably too late for you. <laughs> Growing up, I always wanted to walk around people that have succeeded. Ministers who are seasoned. And they are worth much their life. That is what will help you. Information. People have a lot of information, but they are empty and they can buy it. That kind of information is not what you need. Any information that does not add promotion to your life or does not better your life, trash it. It is not for you because it is not only going to cause you to be stagnant, it is going to, along the way, cause setbacks in your lives. Some people teach some other people how to marry their husbands and their wives. Who made them marriage counselors? And you go and sit down there and they are telling you how to treat your man and how to treat your well. Let me tell you, if it blows up, there will not be anywhere to be found. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Yeah, they tell you, they are experts. How you should cook and how you should open car doors and how you look. Culture and tradition matters. Where I came from, Sometimes it doesn't occur to me to open the door for my wife, but that doesn't mean I don't love her, so you cannot judge me based on that. Amen. If you can open doors, open the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get information. Feed your mind with the kind of information that will help you develop your own goals. If it does not add anything, doesn't bring any benefit, trash it. It's not for you. Hallelujah. It's not for you. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 3, verse 11. 2 Thessalonians 3, 11. Let's read something from there. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in this orderly manner, not walking at all, but are busy bodies. They are busy bodies. In the body of Christ, we have a lot of busy bodies. Those are the apples that are corrupting the grace that we have in our hand. Busy bodies. They know everything in Greensboro. They know everything in America. They know everything in North Carolina. They know everything in Charlotte. They know everything, everything, everything about somebody. Except what they, 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 what concerns them, they don't know, they don't see it. <laughs> but they can read your book and play your cassette. Mm -hmm. But as for their tapes, nobody knows their existence. They are busy bodies in the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul described them as disorderly people. Disorderly people. Grace Chapel have no time and room for busy bodies. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Busy bodies. Mind your own business. Amen. And if you have any grace, help a brother or a sister to stand on his or her feet. Amen. That was what we call and encourage here. Not you knowing everything. Not knowing everything. 
reading the code of a lab work and knowing the kind of disease they have and the kind of problem they face and all these things, they are disorderly people. Mm-hmm. It will surprise you. People have ar- archived history of people. And when they got up in the morning, instead of going through their life and to see where life would take them, they go through one by one. <laughs> Mr. James, today the target is on you. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. I am finishing now. After you have gotten information, you need to ask the question, how? And that is get understanding. You need, there is one way to have information, another way to understand it. You go to lectures, in colleges, universities, sometimes you go there with tape recorders and what not that the professor have lectured the class or done everything you recorded it. You came home, you are replaying it, but you don't know what he's talking about. You need to research and get to the bottom of what he's talking about. Understanding. If you understand your mission as a child of God, you will not have time to be a busybody in other person's life. If you understand your your mission as a child of God, why God brought you here, you will instead focus on that to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Let me tell you, the kingdom of God needs men and women who can stand in the gap to work for God. Not to work against one another. Praise chapel, we want to build a, a church building Daycare. Yes, and night I was dreaming of having even a computer lab where we can train and educate our children. Amen. This is the mind we want in the house of God. Amen. Not a polluted and a perverted busybody matters. People who are serious and they know why they were saved to serve and to use their gift to honor God. That is what praise chapel is all about. For that to happen, you must unleash the power of your mind. That is by changing your mind, getting the right source and kind of information and building that information into a deeper level which is getting the understanding let us read the last text and we are closing. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Again, Proverbs 4 7. Whoever gets there, please read it. And we'll be closing with it. The first person to read it will receive a crown from the Lord. Proverbs 4 7. Yes. Amen. Sell everything. Wisdom is the key. Wisdom is the principal thing. And getting wisdom means understand the mission. If you understand the mission, nobody matters to you. When we come here to pray, it will interest you. That how some people pray, some even sit and stand and, sh- and sugar themselves and look at them how they are praying. And the words they are praying and the petition they are making. And the moment they exit here, they will not even reach their homes. They will confer with another. And they will be saying, I bet today I have some. This sister man has a lot of problem going on in her life. You don't know your mission. 
if you know your mission, you would rather avail yourself to be a blessing to the body Amen. and not to, uh, to be a liability to the body. May the Lord richly bless you. God bless you.